Hey everyone, Andrew here from Property Association. We're just going to take a quick look at uh, the role property played leading up to the election um, and in the results and also what the results now mean for property. So if you find these topics interesting, you want more of this content, can you share, like, subscribe, because that'll uh, allow us to come up with more of this content. So having a look at the role that it played uh, leading up to the election, obviously the negative gearing policy from um, Labor uh, probably backfired a little bit on them because I've had a look at the statistics and if you look at the areas where um, people were suffering from mortgage stress and rental stress you saw quite a large swing towards um, the Liberal Nationals so uh, from the list of the top 20 areas that were under rental stress you the top 15 all had a swing towards Liberals and Nats so I think um, the, the thought that that negative gearing um, policy which would definitely reduce you know, the demand from investors, which would therefore reduce rental properties in the long term and, and increase rents, was definitely on these people's minds. Also, I think you, you've got people that had that mortgage stress, people that paid you know, 850 for a house, borrowed 700, it's now worth 750, and they're thinking, well, if value is gonna drop even more because of this policy, well, where am I gonna be left at? Am I gonna be left with a loan that's larger than what my, my assets were. So I, I really think um, the ALP got it wrong in that regard. Um, Morrison did have um, you know, his first home buy guarantee that he's, he's thrown in there, but I really think it's quite irrelevant. It's not gonna actually um, you know, trigger for, for many people due to the criteria. So uh, I think the, the property played a big part. I think um, a lot of property advocates did a big push to really explain the, the negative impacts of, of removing uh, negative gearing um, and it worked in that regard. So moving forward now, I think we, we you know, a lot of people are commentating saying, oh great, the market's gonna shoot back and we saw the share market uh, bounce back strongly yesterday, but I, I just believe it's business back to normal now. So there's a lot of units that need to be soaked up and um, that'll start to happen. And investors will start to creep back in now with more confidence. I think we can say that the, the negative gearing argument's probably dead for another 20 years. I don't think anyone's gonna come close to touching it again, it wouldn't make any sense. So, um, and, and it's not the answer. If you wanna provide affordable, housing, dropping prices from 800,000 to 700,000 really doesn't do that much. When you need a 20% deposit, the difference then is between 160,000 deposit and 140,000 deposit, you know, plus your stamp duty. So the real difference there is 20,000. I don't think if you can save 140, you can save 160. I think the real issue is helping people save, giving incentives for people to save, to be able to build up that, that deposit, maybe keep the banks a little bit in check so we don't have credit going out of control uh, like it did, and that might help quite a bit. So I, I feel that, um, the good news for property is that based on the election result, we're gonna go back to business as normal, which will probably still see us in the next six to nine months um, hurting a little bit because there is that large supply, especially in Sydney of, of apartments. Um, and then we'll get back into our normal cycle, which I do believe would have been in jeopardy if the, the Labor Party came in and uh, demolished negative gearing uh, the way they plan to. So again, please like, share the video, subscribe, let us know any other topics in the comments that you want us to talk about, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks.